everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Fiju. I work with Jobberman, and I'll be taking you through this session, which is tagged Five Easy Steps to Choosing a Career Path. Okay, um, so, but before I start, I'll just talk to you about um, Jobberman. Um, so Jobberman is the number one online recruitment platform in Nigeria with over 2 million candidates on our platform and 60,000 plus employers. Our goal is to create job opportunities for young people. And, you know, um, Jobberman Youth Engagement is committed to upskilling 5 million young people and placing 3 million of them in dignified work within the next five years. Um, so we're trying to train people within the ages of 18 to 35, and we've been putting a lot of people in jobs, training a lot of people. To join us, you need to sign up on um, our soft skills um, portal. I'll, I'll take you through um, the details later on the live session. You know, part of the things that we're doing to upskill people and, you know, put them in jobs is a virtual career fair. I don't know if you heard about a virtual career fair, but it's holding on the 30th of September and you can still register. So you just have to sign up for the virtual career fair by um, clicking on www.jobberman.com forward slash career fair. So to the event of the day, like I said, we are taking you through three five easy steps to choosing a career path. So I know a lot of us have, qu have questions concerning how, you know, to move from one point to the other and, you know, to actually do good in the careers that we've chosen for ourselves. So we're going to be um, talking about this and to take us on this, we will be um, introducing a guest speaker. Her name is Fumilola Kende. So I'll just tell you a little bit of Fumilola before she comes on. So Fumilola is the founder of Careers with Fumi Consulting, a talent development and recruitment consultancy firm with the vision to help youths get employed with a dream job that allows them to live a more fulfilled life. Hmm. Kind of like what Jobberman is trying to do. This is, our, this is our expression of our commitment to becoming a notable solution provider to the menace of unemployment globally through our platform, www.careerswithfumi.com. She's also the author of Freelancing Secrets 101, How to Make Money While Waiting for Your Dream Job. She holds a BSc in Computer Science and MSc in IT with Strategic Innovation and Management Studies from Kingston University, London. In April 2013, she was awarded the Best Student-Led Volunteering Student Award by Kingston University, London, and served as the International Student Officer while on the Student Union Board. She's a certified life coach, an emotional intelligence certified specialist, an author, speaker, and mentor. Her core purpose is to help every individual attain the highest level of confidence and purpose in their careers, which leads to job satisfaction and overall happiness. What a bio. <laughs> that was awesome. So we're looking to, you know, get her on board. Is Fumilola here with me? Hi, Fumilola Kainde. Hello. Okay, so before she comes up, I want to hear from you. What 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 are the things you you need to have a successful career? And you know, how do you build a successful career? What is even a successful career? What comes to you as a successful career? I want to see answers to these questions in the chat section. Um, is there anybody saying something in chat section? Okay, since nobody is saying anything, I'm just going to say what I think a successful career is to me. A successful career is a career that, you know, you a career where you've been able to build a name for yourself and you've become a trustworthy person in, the cho in your choosing field. So even if um, you are somebody in marketing, um, you're known far and wide by people in the marketing industry that, you know, you can do your job and you can do it well. So that's what a successful career, um, that's, that's what a successful career is. So I don't know if you have, okay, okay. Um, I'm seeing something from Salma Mohammed. She's saying a career where I enjoy what I do. That's, that's really good. 
Oh, we have Fumilala here already. Hi, Fumilala. Hi, good evening. Oh, Great to have brother. you here. Thank you. Thank you. Please take the stage. Oh, great. Thank you for holding the stage for me. <laughs> How have you been so far? Fine, thank you. Awesome. Fine, thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. I'm excited to be here. So just give me a little, just give me one second. Let me plug my earphones. Cause no problem. To, so no problem. Be live. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, I believe so, we have everybody online, yeah? Uh, we are going to be talking about how to develop your career in five steps. So I'm a career coach. My name is Fumilala Kende, and I'm the founder of Careers with Fumi Consulting. One of the things I do as a career coach is to help you to land your dream job, to help you to live a fulfilling life, and also to help you to develop a purposeful career. Apart from all of those things, one of the things I also do is to help you make sure that you have a winning CV, cover letter, and also be able to enjoy your life through the job that you get and also you know nail all those interviews that you go for and of course learn how to use linkedin to be able to attract global opportunities i'm just going to be taking you today quickly through five steps five steps that you need to know when you want to start up your career path of course people would mention that oh should i go for a job or should i start up my career as a career coach i will always advise for you to carve out your career path as quickly as possible, as fast as possible. Also, I will always advise that a job is great, right? But then if you get a job just because you want to get money, then after a while you will get into a, a period of unfulfillment. You get to a period of you job jump hopping from one job to the other just because you want to be able to make make ends meet. And um, most likely some people take jobs for high salary, they take jobs for relocation benefits, they take jobs for prestige and title, which is fine. However, whatever job you are taking, make sure that you have already developed a career path that you can transition to from time to time over the period of years. So you don't have to start moving from one job, one industry to the other with no plan in mind. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do the first step is for you to be able to do a personal SWOT on yourself. That's called a SWOT analysis, meaning you need to find out what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what the opportunities are, and also the threats are to you personally. That is really easy. All you need to do is go to Google and type SWOT. Once you type SWOT, you see a lot of free templates for you to develop a SWOT analysis. So let's start with the first one, which is your strength. What are your strengths? What are the things that you are good at? What are the things that people would always call you to do? What are the skills you've developed over the years? So have you taken some online courses and you've actually gained experience in those places? Have you been able to volunteer in an NGO or an orphanage? Have you been able to develop your writing skills, your content development skills? These are your strengths. Are you good with people, managing people, or even resolving conflict? That is an amazing strength. Or are you just really great with technology and people always call you to fix one or two things when it comes to computers or softwares you know you are the one that they call the techie either in your house or in your environment or in your community that is a strength and you should not take it lightly you have to pen that down on a piece of paper right now or on your notebook the next thing you need to find out is your weaknesses your weaknesses could be a lot they could be little however I always advise do not focus on your weaknesses because your weaknesses are just to show you that okay these are not the areas you are so strong in and you can always outsource them so what are the things you don't like to do? Maybe you don't like to crunch numbers, for example. Maybe you are not too aware about what tools you need to use in your industry. It might be, it might be a weakness. Or maybe you're not in line with technology tools and softwares that can help you do your job better. These are weaknesses and they can pose as threats when you are applying to a job or when you are developing your career path. So that, that's okay if it's a weakness. However, I always advise don't leave it as a weakness for too long, especially when you weigh it across the threats that you have in your environment. And these threats could actually, you know, affect your job opportunities and developing a career path for yourself. The next one you need to work on is the opportunities. Opportunities are everywhere, I would always say. However, the opportunities can 
only be available to you when you are properly positioned, right? So there's an opportunity for you to do a job as a data analyst. Do you have the skill set as a data analyst? Have you looked at your strengths? Have you looked at the strengths you have as a data analyst? Do you know how to crunch numbers? Do you know how to use Excel? Do you know how to use Microsoft Power BI, right? Are you good with numbers? Are you good with designing? There's so many other strengths that you can have that can be able to translate to what you can do. So you need to know the opportunities that are available. The other thing you can do while looking for opportunities is to use Google. Use Google to look for the opportunities that are available. Google opportunities for, for career development. Google opportunities for professionals. Google opportunities for graduates. You know, use these particular keywords that when you put them into Google, they will bring out a lot of opportunities for you. Also do a lot of research. So read, 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 read. Don't be tired of reading and researching and also asking people questions around you. So you are skilled in IT, you're skilled in HR. Ask people around you, mentors and coaches, what are the kind of jobs that I can do? What are the opportunities I can do. Ask them if you can volunteer in their organization. Ask them if you can create content for them. You always have to be looking for opportunities because it's not every time that opportunities will come to you. Sometimes you just have to go out and find them. The last one is threats. Threats, threats, threats. Right now we know that technology has become a threat right to a lot of people's jobs because a lot of people did not actually pick up these technological tools while they were out there but you know it's not too late you can always go online to read up a lot of tools you can go on Coursera to read up a lot of tools and sign up for online courses however if you're in a job right now or you're looking at developing a career path you should be looking at the threats in that career right now what are the threats to your career path so if that's uh if you're in a in an organization, right? And you guys don't really use technology to make your job easier. Then you should be looking at how you can learn technological tools, how you can learn softwares, how you can learn a lot of um, applications that can help you to do your work better. So that way, whatever information that is being brought to your organization, you can leverage on technology, right? And you can also become a superstar in your organization by bringing up new products and services. So threats are actually really good, I would say, because they help you to wake up right? They help you to be awake. They help you to be aware about, okay, what are the opportunities that are around me? What are the threats that are around the opportunities? Like government policies, technological tools, softwares, right? A lot of policies are being made up right now. It could be anything. Threats could come from anywhere. So you always have to make sure you do research and development in your career path. Don't lay too low for too long. Don't get too comfortable. Even if you get a job today, don't get too comfortable. Google what your career path is going to be like in the next 20 years, in the next 10 years, you always need to be forward thinking, right? Right now, we're in the future of work. We've been thrown into the future of work due to the pandemic. However, a lot of people are still not aware about this future of work. They could just be wondering, what is this future of work? What is all this thing? What does it mean? Some people are still so, so ignorant. And I know that you're not one of them because I know for you to come on this live session with me and with Jabberman, you are aware about the future of work and you're also thinking futuristically about what career path you want to develop right the next thing you need to do you need to get a mentor mentor me mentor me mentor me i get a lot of people sending me messages telling me to mentor them but however when i look at that profile on linkedin i see right you are in a career path that is very different from what i'm doing so how can i mentor you i would always say the first thing you need to do when you're reaching out to someone to ask for mentorship which is a very very important step in developing your career path is that you need to come from an angle of value you need to ask yourself what can i add to this person's life i want to i want to uh, from another candidate to mentor on me or i want the ceo of jabberman to mentor me you should be asking yourself this question what do i want to add to their life what value do i want to bring to the table it's not about them just you know coming in to help you but how can you help them how can you make their life better what are the skills what are the strengths what are the abilities that you have that would make them want to mentor you that will make them want to bring you under their shoulder and say hey come along with me you need to learn this come along with me volunteer in this program come along with me work on this project for me you can be given a pet project, for example. However, if you don't have the skills, the abilities that you need, right, to function in that pet project, you would not be taken as a serious mentee. So that's why you have to first develop yourself. I'm so excited that Jobberman is giving a lot of free online courses and free trainings for you. So make sure you take advantage of all of these trainings. Do not take them for granted because a lot of people pay huge sum of money for these trainings. After you've done that, make sure you always include it on your CV and also on your LinkedIn profile because if you are the greatest in your community and nobody knows about you then it is not good right you need to make sure you work on your visibility right after you get a mentor what do you need to do next you need to get a coach while you're developing your career path the thing the thing with coaching right now is that 
um, a lot of people uh, mention that they need a coach, but some of them do not know why they need a coach. Why would say you should get a coach is that when you are developing a career path, you only know what you know, right? You only know what is going on in your industry. You only know what you need to know. And sometimes you might not know some other hidden information. But a coach is someone that has been grounded, someone that has been skilled, someone that has the knowledge and experiences that can put you through your career path effectively. So their career path basically is on project management, for example. When you watch, we work with a coach. A coach will put you through the necessary trainings. The coach will put you through the necessary skills you need to gain to become an effective project manager because they are project managers and they are project manager. There's a different case between when you are a project manager and you are an effective project manager. A project manager that is the project is always delivered on time. You have an amazing team. You have ex excellent skills right in managing stakeholders. How do you know what certifications to do as a project manager? How do you know what programs to go for? How do you know what associations to join? You need to work with a coach to develop all that. You can also use online resources, right? You can Google and you can always reach out to mentors in project management because when you reach out to someone that is a project manager, has a mentor, right? You should remember, as I said in point two, that you should reach out with, from an angle of value, asking them what can you do for them, how you would like to add value in their life. Remember, you have a goal and an agenda at mind. You want them to mentor you. However, you are not put, opposing you know, this on them. You are not putting them in a tight corner, right? You are, you are not demanding. Rather, you are asking and you are also seeking to join them in their community from an angle of value. So it's so important to make sure that number one, you perform your SWOT analysis. Number two, you get a mentor. Number three, you get a coach. Number four, you need to network. Network, network, network. Yes, you've mentioned you've mentioned all of these things and you're like, oh, for me, I know. People say we should network. How do I network? I don't know people. I don't have a large network. Maybe I just graduated from my university or I just finished my NYSE or I've been in this industry for five years and all I do is work, work, work. I don't really know many people. But I would say that one thing that the online world has done is that it has made you meet people faster and without less, with less hindrances. So you can connect with me, right? Because I am online. You don't need to wait till you see me physically, which might actually never happen in many, many years to come. But then you can connect with me. You can connect with other people online. Remember when you're networking, you should always network with an agenda. Don't network just because you want to get a lot of people on your LinkedIn, just because you want to amass a long, long number or large number of followers, or you want to have a lot of people mentioning your name and sharing you on. Don't network for the facade or for the glitz and glamour. Network with an agenda. Network to grow network to progress, network to add value, right? Network to develop your career path along where you want to be. You are looking at yourself. You're a website designer. You cannot be a website designer for, now for years because as you see now, there are sites that even I can come on and develop a website by, my, by myself without having to use a website designer. So when you're developing a career path, you are looking at the functionality of your skill set now and how you can progress from a website designer to a software designer or to a software programmer, right? How you can develop into product management, developing products, how you can also develop yourself and transition your career into digital project management. In terms of you can manage two, three projects at the same time without you having to physically be there. And also how you can head the department and perhaps start your own company, a software designing company or maybe a website designing company. So developing a career path is more than you just making money. It's more than you just um, having a job tied to it. It's about what you want to do in the long term. You're looking at two, four, five, six years from now. You're not only looking at the skill sets that you have, but you're looking at the skill set that the industry that you want to work in requires for you, right? The next thing you need to do after developing that career path from afar, I'm just going to backtrack to the networking part because I have a lot of things to say. Networking basically is the act of you meeting one or two people. In fact, it's basically you just forming a relationship. Let me just call it relationship building because I believe sometimes the word network has been so overused that people um, overflog it and a lot of people do not really know what it means. So therefore, they meet people, they pick up their business cards, they don't come in contact with them after a while, they don't follow up, they don't send them WhatsApp messages, they don't really connect with them. They are just amassing business cards or they are just connecting with people 
people increasing their numbers on LinkedIn and other social media platforms. So that is not how to network. That is the wrong way to network. What you need to do is to see that one say, hey, this is my career path. I need to network with five people. I need to form relationships, right? Build relationships with five people in my industry. I need to build relationships with five people in my industry. Let's say your industry is fashion designing, right? You are a fashion designer. You need to build a relationship with five people that are top top notch in your industry, right? Because you want to learn from them. You want to network. You want to grow. Or you're having a challenge in your career path right now and you're looking at how you can resolve this problem. You've not got online. You've looked for Google solutions, but you've not found any. And you know that there's someone that has been in the industry for five, 10 years that probably might have gone through this issue so they can put you through the right path. So what you need to do is to network with the people in that industry, right? When you're networking with them, you're not just networking with them, shoving your problems all over them right you're not networking to just let them know that oh you need them for one or two things and after you've gotten the solution you're just going to disappear no you're networking to build a relationship with them when you're building a relationship with someone you're building a relationship with them for a long-term basis not just for a short term not just for one month not just for two months not just for three weeks you're looking at two five ten years along the way the relationships we build with people via networking sometimes can actually become collaboration and partnerships avenues for yourself and for your business and even for your career. Because I know in as much you are developing a career path, you could also be running a side hustle or a business beside your career path, which is fine, right? As long as it doesn't clash with your career or with your job. But then you are networking with people in your industry. You are building relationships with them. How do you do that? You need to first pen down what you want to achieve, pen down your agenda on a piece of paper or on a notebook, right? The agenda basically could be that you want to solve a problem. It could be that you want to build your network or you want to build a community. You need to pen that down on paper. You need to put down on your notebook. People, you need to know what you want to do, what you want to achieve. And also that would help you to meet them. That would help you to form a plan on how you are going to approach them. That would also help you to know what languages, the key ones you should include in whatever message that you're going to send to them so if you're networking with them just to you know learn from them then you could share information from them one of the things i always advise that when you want to network with professional that you need to have consumed their content so if you want to network with someone you're not just networking with them because um you heard about them you need to have read about them you need to know about them you need to know where, what they do you need to know the challenges that they face you need to have read their their, their interviews read their their pages maybe on social media if they have books buy the books if they have courses sign up for the courses if they've written blog articles they've been interviewed online make sure you consume as much content about them as you should right so you are networking and building a relationship with them based on the information that you know about them so that is basically something you can always use as a conversation starter you can talk about the article you read about them perhaps they were interviewed in punch newspaper you can write about the article just tell them how the article was able to help you in your career or how the article was able to lead you through whatever challenges that you were facing so that way you are networking with a mindset and when they read the article they know that you are someone that is serious. They know that someone that has done his or her homework, right? You're not just networking because you see their names online or you see them as people of, um, of a high caliber or high network, right? You're not networking with them to be parasitic, but you're networking with them to build a relationship that is mutually beneficial. After sending that message to them, Make sure that you connect with them on LinkedIn. I would always say that LinkedIn is a powerful tool for you to connect with a lot of professionals. I've been connecting with a lot of people so far, right? And I've been able to meet a lot of professionals on LinkedIn. I've been able to land jobs on LinkedIn. I've been able to get business deals, speaking engagements, and so many other opportunities. So I always advise for you to use LinkedIn, right, to connect with them because it's an opportunity for you to connect with them both in Nigeria and also outside the country. So if you have a lot of people that you look up to that you want to build a relationship, with online you don't always have to restrict yourself to only nigeria because there are professionals online all over the world everywhere doing what you're doing or doing what you envision to do building that career path that you are interested in or already have built that career path and they can put you along the way so don't restrict yourself to only nigeria look internationally there are 
all over the world, over 600 million professionals on LinkedIn. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you use the platform to network. After you've been able to send a message to them, be patient, right? Make sure that you are patient with meeting up with them when they send the message to you, when they reply. If they don't reply after one week, you can send a reminder. Send a reminder, a gentle reminder or soft reminder just to make sure that they got your first message. If you can find their email online, then our advice, you can always send an email. But in the absence of an email, Chef for them on other social media platforms. They could be on Twitter, they could be on Instagram, or they could be really active on Facebook. It's not every professional that is active on LinkedIn, I would say. So you need to know what platform they are active on and also connect with them. Or if you have an access to them through someone, you could ask to be referred to them, probably via their phone number or via their email address. Always be forward thinking of how you can connect with people at the fastest way and build relationships with them. When you send them that message, make sure that the message includes what you want to help them achieve or how you want to work with them, how you want to partner or collaborate with them. Remember, it doesn't say that you should send them a message asking for a job. It doesn't say you should send them a message asking them to review your CV. Neither does it say you should send a message asking them to ref asking them to refer you to a job, right? You should not reach out to people at the first instance asking to get from them. That is a parasitic way of networking. Working. People would always ignore your message. And I know that some of you might have been sending messages to people asking, oh, I need a job or oh, connect me with this person if there are any jobs. In. And people will probably not respond to you. Or if they respond, they will let you know that they will get back to you, which they probably won't. Right. So you need to make sure you change your approach when networking and building relationships with people because people want other people that will add value to them over a long period of time. Nobody wants someone that will come into their life just to get something and go away. It's not nice okay make sure that you make sure that you network with them from an angle of value after they sent you a message and reply maybe asking to meet with you or speak with you you could request for them to send you their phone number or their email address or their whatsapp number whichever one is convenient for you to reach them make sure you always take the conversation offline right online to offline so that means basically if you connect with them on social media make sure you get their phone number or their email address don't leave it online don't keep communicating with someone on on linkedin you're building a relationship with them make sure you make it more intimate by getting their phone number or their email address that way you can easily connect with them you can ask that question you can place a phone call to them let's say you are lucky and they send you their phone number quickly place a phone number place a phone call to them don't wait till the next day don't wait till the next week it shows that you are serious it shows that you are ready to develop a career path that is fulfilling and purposeful and it also shows that you are excited to meet them while placing the phone call make sure that you ask them introduce yourself of course remind them how you got their phone number they sent their phone number to you by linkedin maybe also make sure that you ask them if it's a good time to talk. That's why, because they could be really busy at that time and you also don't want to rush the conversation. You want to make sure that they are prepared, right, to speak with you. And you also make sure that you also have all of your scripts ready. You're not just calling them to say, hi, hello. You have an agenda, remember? So when you send them a message, when you make a phone call to them, ask them if it's the best time to speak with them or you want, want they want you to call at a later time, maybe lunchtime or after work. Let's say it's the best time to speak to them. Introduce yourself to them. Ask them a little bit about them. So be interested in whoever you want to build a relationship with. Ask questions about their work, about their career. Ask questions that, you know, will keep them on their toes. And ask them if you can always reach out to them anytime you have any other questions. At your first connection with them, your first phone call, don't call them asking them for a job opportunity. Don't do that. Don't. That's because it is your first time of meeting them. And the first time is more of like an icebreaker. It's the first time for them to get to know you. You can talk about yourself as well, what you like doing, how you how you how you enjoy their post on LinkedIn. You know, just make the conversation very, very free, very friendly, very social. Don't make it too professional. Don't make it too serious and don't make it in such a, don't speak in such a way that you are pushing for them to give you something, maybe a job, an opportunity. You could ask, maybe you want to, if they have a, a company, right, you want to volunteer or you want to intern, that's a good way. And remember that internship and volunteering could always, could also be paid or unpaid. So you also need to make sure that you are aware if you're looking to volunteer, are you ready to go for an unpaid volunteering role just for you to get that 
knowledge that you need just for you to get into their community and for you to build as much information as you need in their circle. You need to make sure that you're focusing on how you can connect with them. But then you are not looking at what you want to grab right now. You are looking at it in the long term, how you can build a relationship with them, how you can add value, how they can bring you on on projects and opportunities that you can use to further your career path. Okay? It's so important for you to make sure. The next step, which is the last step, and I'm going to do a recap, and I think we will we'll probably will have a lot of time for questions, right? Is for you to develop yourself. I cannot overemphasize the reason why you need to develop yourself right now there are so many free information free online courses free skills sites free 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 and when you're developing your career path you could get so stuck you could get so sucked in in chasing free 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 courses online courses and so many things that are being shown at you you know a lot of ivy league schools a lot of ivy league schools and training centers and online sites have been showing a lot of free information especially during this pandemic but when you're developing your career path you don't always have to chase every and any free training that you see don't train every free so I think during the pandemic, I saw a lot of people taking online courses on how to, uh, on coronavirus and COVID-19. And it was so funny because I had to go back to check the profile of the people that were taking these online courses. And none of them were in health. None of them were in health. None of them were in the medical, medical line. None of them were in the, in the health industry. You know, none of them were nurses or doctors. And I was just wondering, how does this certification add up? How does this certification add up? So if you put a certification or a course you took on COVID-19, on coronavirus, on, or, or on a pandemic on your CV, and you are a data analyst, how does it add up? Did you use that information to develop a smart tool to determine the rate of how coronavirus was spreading during the time? Or did you use the information to be able to de de develop an app or a site where people could monitor the rate of coronavirus and how it was being solved per minute. So that's how you should take an online course. You should take it in such a way that it is, it is applicable to your career path. So don't take online courses because people are taking it. Don't jump on that bandwagon because people are doing it, so I need to do it. Oh, five of my friends have taken these courses. Let me join them. Don't do that. When you see that one say, I want to develop my career path as a data analyst. I want to develop my career path as a HR specialist, as a HR consultant, as a HR officer, as a human resource administrator. Then you should be looking at what are the skill sets that I need as a human development capital specialist. You should be looking at, okay, Communication, you should be looking at taking certifications. Either you should be looking at joint organizations such as the, the CIPM and so many others like that. You should be looking at what are the other skills you need to take? What are the courses you need to take? Ab adapting to a new workforce. That's an example of a course, right? Um, managing um, the digital space, managing a digital workforce, right? Managing a gig ec economy. Um, Understanding how to keep your employees or how to keep your colleagues engaged at work. Those are the kind of courses you should take. Not coronavirus or COVID-19. It doesn't apply to your career path. If you're in the health sector, if you're in the medical sector, fine. You should go for such courses because it will build you up. And of course, it would show that you are in line, you are in tune with what's going on in the world. And it could also land you a job. So make sure that when you are developing yourself, sit down and develop a career development plan for you yourself so this is development for yourself right and for your career is different from your career path but it's in line with your career path if you are looking at becoming an accountant you have a bsc in accounting right you finish with a 2-1 or with a 2-2 two -two. then you're looking at writing your icon or your acca you have to sit down and put a date to that you have to sit down and start planning you have to sit down and start looking at courses you can take on budgeting you have to sit down and look at courses you can take on Accounting tools, how you can use accounting tools, Pitch Tree, Sage One, Wave Apps, and so many other apps that are being used right now. Because when you reach the peak of your career path, you don't want to get there as you're developing a career path and it seems as if you've just been working, right? You've just been doing the job day in, day out. You've been doing one job for five years, you've been doing one job for three years. But however, your career has not been progressing, right? You have not been developing yourself. You've not been taking up new challenges. You've not been asking yourself questions such as what 
is my career path going to look like in the next three years? What is my career path going to look like in the next five years? What are the kind of opportunities that are available to me? What are the threats to my career path? When you do your SWOT analysis, you will have a very glaring view of where you need to improve yourself. Because when you look at the threats, right, and you look at the weaknesses, you say, hey, I'm not so good in this area. I'm not so good in this area. All right, what are the courses that can help me to develop myself in these areas? So developing yourself is so important. And you should always set a budget to developing yourself. You need to get to a level when we are developing your career path that you move from just free, free, free development courses, right, to paid development courses. Because where it's free, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people that are looking for free, right? Which is great, which is exciting. However, when you start working, right, you need to set a budget every month to your personal development. Um, you are being paid a particular salary every month. Let's say you're paid 50k a month or you're paid 70k a month, whatever the case may be, 150k, 200 k whatever the amount is, at least you need to set at least 10 to 20 percent of your pay to your development set it as a budget right to say okay this month i'm going to take this course and it's going to be a paid course and i'm taking this course because these are the skill sets i want to develop right or i'm going to start this certification because this certification is going to help me to get a managerial role or i want to join this association a paid association an example could be probably um, a public speaking association such as toastmasters there are so many associations out there developing on whatever area you want to develop in your career you join the association, a paid association, or you join a membership, right? The memberships are always paid. So you need to make sure that you set a budget every month towards that. So you don't get too used to going for only free courses and free training, thereby not helping you to develop that kind of the kind of um, authenticity that you need and even the depth that you need because there's just so much you can be taught in a free training and in a free seminar. But when you pay for a course, when you pay for a training, it also shows that you are very serious. It also shows that you are ready to go to the next level. It also shows that it also helps you to build your network, right? The people you meet in a free training is different, is different from the people you meet in a paid training, right? The mindset is different. The kind of opportunities you would attract is also very different. So if you go for a training right that costs you zero naira and you go for a training that costs you 100k right in a month you can look at the caliber of people you meet in a free training and in a paid training right because the number of people that would sign up for the 100,000 naira training will probably be less however but then there'll be people that can afford it that are looking for more people that are ready to take on a new career path or they're looking to develop their career path and they don't mind bringing out that amount from their pocket to pay that month however a free training will be very crowded even majority of people that sign up for free training do not complete it because it's free and there's nothing for them to lose anyway once they sign up they take it for two days three days after a while they get bored they get tired they bring up excuses and they move on to the next free thing right so don't get into that trap of jumping from one free training to the other make sure you set a budget while you're developing your career path to develop yourself, develop your brain, because the most important asset you can ever have is your brain. You have to set a budget to develop in your brain, develop yourself, develop yourself, invest in yourself. You can invest in the amazing things in shoes, in bags, in clothes, you know, in gadgets, in devices as well. All of those things will pass away because after a while, the next, you know, the next version will be, will be brought out. The next iPhone will be out. The next Samsung will be out. The next laptop will be out. The next, you know, fast, fast cars will be out. So what about yourself? You are the most important asset and you are the most important asset that should always be appreciated part time. And you are the CEO of you. Don't wait for your organization or your company, right, to develop you or to send you on a training you set a budget out of your salary no matter how small it is you can sign up for courses as little as a thousand as little as two thousand as little as five thousand on so many other sites and also don't be too too attached to certificates and certificates and certificates when you take a training course you need to make sure that whatever training whatever knowledge that you've acquired from that training you apply it to your job 
If you are not working right now, that's fine. Start up a project, a pet project. Start up a project that you can apply that knowledge into it. So that way it's not just knowledge in terms of just residual knowledge in your brain. You've been able to apply it into what you can do. You've been able to show as an evidence to say, hey, I took this course on Coursera. I took this course on Jobberman. I took this course on Udemy. And this has the, these are the projects I was able to apply it to. If it's a project that you cannot single-handedly form by yourself, then you can come with, together with one or two of your friends or your colleagues, right, to form this project. And if you think that, oh, they don't have the manpower, then you can reach out to NGOs and organizations. Oh, that you have an idea, you have a project, you might want to run it by them, right? If they want to sponsor it, or you could volunteer to try out the project on a case-by-case -case basis in their organization. So you should also be looking at how you can apply the knowledge that you have gained into something that is sustainable. The, the greatest, the the mistake a lot of people make is that they go on trainings, they go on certifications, and they don't apply it. They just want to put it on their CV. So when they apply for a job, they will get called for the job, which is fine. But when you get to the job, you'll be asked, how did you apply this training? When you when you put something on your CV that you'll be able to achieve it, and you come on to a new job, people, the, your employer, right, your HR manager wants to look at, wants to see how you can apply that wonderful certification, that wonderful course that you've taken into the organization. How you can use that skill set that you have to increase revenue or reduce cost. How you can form new products and services. So you should always be thinking as a CEO. You should always be thinking as a business owner. Even as a career person, you're looking to form a career path. Look at how whatever skills, trainings, and certifications you're acquiring right now. How you can make that generate some income for you. How you can make that generate income for your organization. How you can make that generate income even for yourself either as an entrepreneur, either as a business owner or as a partner or as a collaborator, whatever the case may be. For me, your career path doesn't just have to be just when you are in a job, right? It could also be applicable to when you are starting a business because even your business, if you're an entrepreneur, is your career, is what you can do is what you've been able to show to the world. It's the greatness that God has given you. It's the talents and skills that you've acquired over the years. And it's how you can bring that awesomeness, that value, that increase that you have right within you, how you can bring it to the world, how you can showcase it to the world. So for me, your career path, I'm just going to put one last tip, one last tip before I take questions. I want you to make sure that you put God in everything that you do put god in everything that you do put him first in everything that you do it's so important for you to be aware about how god also helps you how god is applicable in everything that you do when you want to apply for a job right when you apply for an opportunity and you get rejected i'm very sure you'll feel bad if you get the rejection letter but sometimes you need to also think about how a rejection might not be a rejection it might just be a redirection in terms of that might not be the right job for you that might not be the right career path for you have you asked yourself maybe this is not what that should be doing or have i sit have, I, have you sat down to do your SWOT analysis to look at how you play out in the world right so you make sure that you're not just cheating a job title just because of the prestige, just because of the money, or just because of the opportunities that are available. You are checking it, you are chasing that opportunity because it is in line with your strengths and it's also in line with how you've been able to focus on how God has been able to help you along the way. By putting God first, that means you praying, right? That means you also being positive. I know job searching job hunting and even forming a career path can be very very lonely it can be very very tedious sometimes and it can be very very daunting but you need to make sure that you are positive along the way you don't get in, make sure you don't get into conversations with people that talk about how bad the nation is make sure you don't talk about you don't talk against the rulers of whatever country you are in right now make sure that you are always positive make sure that you don't get into conversations that make you get in, into a depressed state of mind or make you feel as if you are you are nothing or makes you get to feel negative about the situation around you. Make sure you don't focus on the statistics of unemployed people on unemployment, else you'll become one of them. Focus on the opportunities that are available to you. Focus on the opportunities in your environment. Focus on the opportunities in your economy. Focus on the opportunities globally. And also, ask God for help. When you're applying for a job, ask God for wisdom. Ask God for knowledge. Ask God for guidance. Before you send it, don't don't rely only on your own strength because God is able to help you along the way, regardless of whatever goal you set for yourself. I know 2020, you have three months to the end 
to of 2020. But these three months are really great and strategic months. And if you sit down and develop your SWOT analysis, if you sit down today and get a mentor, if you sit down today and get a coach, if you sit down today and think about how you can network and start networking and you develop your skills and your strengths, believe you me, before the end of the three months, right, you would have landed yourself a great job that you really want. You would have been able to develop your career path along the way. In fact, you'll be so surprised about the amount of progress you've been able to make. And if you also commit everything that concerns you into God's hand, I'm so sure you're going to be able to achieve everything that you've set out to be. And also, I want you to be aware that challenges are part of life. Um, if you fail today, if you fail tomorrow, if you fail 100 times, that doesn't make you a failure. Failure is just a series of steps towards you becoming a success. So don't feel down. Don't feel discouraged. I failed a couple of times myself. I failed a couple of times myself and I wouldn't say I'm a failure. But those failures, I was able to pick up lessons. What should I have done? What shouldn't I have done? And I've been able to put all of that together and become more successful in whatever area that I'm focusing on. So make sure whatever area you're focusing on, you're looking at how you can turn your failures into success. Look at how you can take the lessons from your failures and say, hey, I sent a message to someone and what I sent to them was, hi, sir, my name is this. I'm a first, I'm a first class graduate of University of this. I need a job. Please help me. See my CV attached. That is not a great way for you to reach out to a mentor or a HR personnel or a recruiter. Remember, as I said, recapping, make sure you reach out from an angle of value. Develop your SWOT analysis. Get a mentor. It's so important. It will help you go far right? And even further than other people around you, make sure you get a coach, someone that can guide you and be able to support you along the way. Make sure you also develop yourself in line with the career path you want. Don't jump on the bandwagon of taking online courses repeatedly and get to with fatigue of webinars and Zoom meetings. Don't get trapped, okay? And make sure you put God first in everything that you do. Thank you so much. And I think I'll take questions now. Hi, Fumi Lola Kendi. Thank you so much. This was an awesome session. Hello. I'm looking through the chat. I can hear can you. you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? No. So guys, I guess she's going to come back very soon. So if you have your questions, I'm very sure you're probably writing them down and I'm sure she's going to be taking um, a lot of questions right now. So if you want to connect with me online, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn name is Fumlala Kende. You can also connect with me on Instagram, Careers with Fumi, on Instagram and on Facebook. And also you can connect with me on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel where I share so much information about career paths and also every information that you need to help you your career path and is that careers with for me as Hi, well Fumi. great i can hear you now um i'm so sorry i'm sorry no you problem. couldn't hear me then no, yeah no. okay this like as i was saying this was an insightful session i learned a lot see thank you i've been writing things oh, i've been wow. writing things down <laughs> awesome. i've been writing things down it was a it was an awesome session. So um, I, I just we just have a couple of questions I want to ask. Okay. Um, so I'll just take you through them. So the first question is, um, sorry, let me be sure. Is personality type a factor when choosing a career path? Okay. That's the first question. Okay. So I'll take that. Personality type is important. Mm -hmm right it's important for you to know your personality type even when you're even going to get less because i look at job hunting as if you getting into a relationship with your employer just as if you're going to get into a marriage relationship so you see a lot of people are married now and you see their personalities are so different so if you if you get in this if you're hot tempered and you get into a relationship with someone that is hot tempered there's no way it's going to end well. You're both going to be clashing, right? One person needs to be cool and the other person needs to be a bit, you know, hyper. So probably if you're flag, you should get into a relationship with a choleric, right? So you can have a most memorable relationship and, you know, the relationship is successful or marriage is successful. So if you people are both on fire, the house will just burn down, 
right? So that's yeah, how it is yeah. when you're looking for, and if both of you are too cool, then probably you might not be able to raise your children effectively because they'll just say, hey, mommy and daddy will accept whatever we do, right? Someone mm-hmm. needs to be very firm and the other needs to be a bit piped down. So, and I'm very sure we probably, we all have parents that if you look at their relationship, you look at their temperament, we can say, oh, mommy is always shouting, that is always yeah. cool, or that is always shouting, mommy is always cool. There's a way that has been able to even help you as a person to grow in your career. So if you're looking at your career and your personality type, yes, know your personality type. I think the great thing that, but don't focus on it too much. Don't focus on it too much, right? Don't make that be something that won't make you take a job opportunity because your personality type could help you to make yourself better. And personality types change. They change depending on the environment. So if I'm working in a school now, right, with kids, I would not be teaching them and coaching them this way, right? I'm going to scare them if I'm too serious, right? If I'm like, children, I I need to make sure that I talk at their tone. I need to make sure I calm down. So I would probably Mm -hmm. would work on my personality to say, oh, hello, children. I'll talk in low, hushed tones. I would bend Mm -hmm. down. I'll almost become a baby that when I get home, you'll be wondering what happened to you. Like, can you speak up? So... Mm -hmm. But but that's more my natural personality, right? My natural personality, I'm sanguine choleric, right? But then if I work with children, when I work with children, I speak with children, yes, I'm I'm upbeat, right? I'm excited, but my voice is also a bit calm. Um, I, I pay attention to them. There's a way I tune my personality to be able to connect with them, right? So it's important for you to know so you would know your weaknesses as well because every personality type has a weakness and has a strength. So, But then it shouldn't be that, oh, I don't think my personality type is going to work in this environment. You could actually work on your personality type to fit the environment if that's what you want. And you feel that, oh, this personality type I want, I want it's not going to work, you are sure, then you, know, you could go for something else. But don't make it the all in all. Make sure you do your SWOT. I did my SWOT yesterday. I met with a mentor of mine yesterday and she told me to do my SWOT. She told me, and I did my SWOT yesterday, right? And I looked at all my strengths. I looked at the opportunities. So even as, even as a career coach, I do a SWOT. So how much more you, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for me for that. Um, still in the same vein, we're still talking about personality types. So okay. we've established that the personality type is actually a factor when it comes to yeah. choosing a career path. So, um, but, but how do you manage personalities to align with career interests? For instance, if I am an introvert and I'm interested yeah. in maybe sales and marketing, how do I integrate that into this career path that I'm interested in? So can you shed more light on that? Okay, that's interesting because I am an introvert stroke extrovert. Oh, yeah, wow. so I'm both. So I switch based on my coming on my environment. Yeah. So if you meet me as a person, let's say off this rec- off of this, we meet on mm-hmm. the road. What I do is that I learn your personality. I learn your likes. I learn your dislikes. Mm-hmm. I understand you. So I like I do my homework on you. Mm-hmm. Right? So I will leave the ground for you to speak. Right, because as an as a sanguine, naturally, I would speak first. I would introduce myself. I would be more upbeat and you know excited to meet you and all. But I'll give you room to express yourself, so I will learn more about you. So I'm actually introverted, extroverted, right? So and I've done sales before. What I did during that time was that I got people that were more extroverted than me. So you don't need to go do it mm-hmm. alone. You get a partner that you can learn from. And then it's not everybody that is extroverted that is even good for sales because some people do not even learn the rudiments of sales, right? So people don't know what sales is all about. They might have not done their homework or they might not have experience. So your personality type, yes, you might not, you might, you face a lot of challenges, I will tell you for sure. You might not want to be the first person to initiate a conversation, right? You might not want to be too aggressive. You might not want to ask questions. You might not want to push for the sale. But if you work with someone, an introverted person, like a mentor that can put you through, right? Or you read up on on, on, on online courses and watch videos on how introvert, how introverted, introverted people can make a sale, right? Just Google these keywords, how to sell as an introvert, how to become, how an introverted person can become a better sales manager and all of that you will see a lot of resources okay and based on a few tips i've shared with you i got someone that i went on sales with i use online right using linkedin Mm -hmm. to reach out to people i placed phone calls so i only made physical visits when it was you know 
very important for the sales i could close online i did that online for the ones i needed to go physically i went with someone so for the times that i lost words and i didn't know what to say the person chipped in my colleague chipped in so even has an introverted person for sales you can always make it work for you and i think online has made it really really easy uh, when you're speaking to someone on the phone you can have a script of what you are going to say you don't mm-hmm. have to uh, be you don't have to forget your words or get caught up in what's going on and then you can always allow them to lead the conversation right while you just ask them questions and then whatever information they give you you can use them to close the sale okay, okay? yes thank you so much for me and there are actually a lot of questions that means a lot of people enjoy this session there's a lot of questions there's this this question from um okpaoluwa adeyonju and she's saying most mentors don't have time because i I know you 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 mentioned um having a mentor you know as part of the things to you know help you with your career path and Mm. she's saying most mentors don't have time how do i keep up so how does okpaoluwa keep keeps up with our mentors i told you i met my men i i had a physical meeting with my a mentor yesterday yes, yes do you yes. know when i initiated the conversation february no february 2020. wow that's a long um, time <laughs> when what when in september yeah when we had when we had the, the meeting yesterday it mm-hmm. was like we had spoken for six months and she said it herself yeah. she was like oh wow we've covered so much it seems as if i've known you for six months wow so it's not about how often It's about how well. I look for depth, right? Not that I was not connecting or communicating. Of course, there are sometimes I just didn't communicate at all. But then I make sure that I, I, okay, I send messages once in a while. She read because she's busy. She might not reply. She might send a meal, right? And all of that. Sometimes I remind myself, oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. And all. So yes, they are busy. But you need to also make sure that you make yourself so valuable that they remember you. Thank because you so much. people can never be too bu- okay. Please let me ask Okpoluwa. Can can you be too bu- busy to pick Buhari's call? <laughs> <laughs> you can never be too busy to pick a president's call because you the value you are going to get from a president calling you. So let's say you have a mentor. Your mentor is too busy to pick 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 speak to you. It's not that your mentor is being overly busy or being mm-hmm. difficult. Your mentor is actually really busy. My mentor that I met with, she's like, has so many um, responsibilities and she was even having a call at the same time before we had our meeting. So, you know, the, the business is genuine, I will tell you. It's more of like, they are genuinely busy, but then you also need to ask yourself, why do I need a mentor? Do I even really need a mentor? Because some people get mentors because, um, maybe because they want to name drop. Oh, this person is my mentor. Oh, Mrs. Bukuma Wosika is my mentor. Oh, Mrs. This is my mentor. Oh, Mr. This is my mentor. Yeah. I know. I was once in that place as well after university right because i'm like ah, i want this person to be my mentor because i see them online i see them on social media i see them on um tv you know the whole everything i was just caught up so you need to ask yourself yeah. what you want to what you need a mentor for then ask yourself how you can add value to your mentor okay hello if you call your mentor hello ma how is work how has it been is there anything i can help you with or i see you've not been posting on your social media can i help you to create content or can we meet just to have like a one hour session 30 minute session i can run through you through or i have some ideas for your content to help you to build your brand or i see that you don't have a linkedin profile or i can put you through what you need to do or ah ma i know you talked about one ngo i would like to run a project you know just look at how you add value that someone wants to pick your call people can never be too busy to, they should never be too busy to pick your call in terms of even when they miss your call they'll call you back or they'll send a text please call me back mm. not that they will ignore your call for three weeks four weeks and you're like ah what did you do so look at how you can be, become so valuable you are valuable already believe me but you need to make sure that you project that value to your mentor in such a way that they know that you are someone that they always want to speak to that if they have a problem in tech let's say you are skilled in tech they call you or they have a problem in accounting they will call you or someone refer you know in such a way that they need you more than you need them them. so you now become Mm. too busy yourself for them do you understand yes i do thank you so much for me so i just we we, we actually um gone past our time but i'll just take one more question and then that's it so how can one switch to a new career path from the for instance, from the education industry to the finance industry with zero knowledge about the next career path. From so education. You want, yes. Oh, that's, an, that's an instance. Yeah. Okay. So you, 
this person, his name is Enamdi Winifred. He's okay. saying he wants to know what it takes to switch from a career path to another without okay. having any experience in these other career paths he's interested in. So is okay. that a possibility? See, how does it do it? Yes, how does it it's do a that? possibility. Um, mm. There are different ways for you to switch career paths. But I would say okay. before you switch, you need to know why you want to switch. Uh, because I know a lot of people switch now because they say, okay, my industry is not moving well. Uh, maybe we're not making money. This industry is not, you know, um, the, the future of this industry is non-existent. Okay, that's a good one for you to switch. But you also need to know the future where you're switching to. So you don't go from fire to fire, right? Mm. What's the future? So if you're switching from accounting to tech, Right. And then also look at how there's a synergy between both industries that you're switching from to. So um, I switched from tech to HR. There's a synergy, right, between tech and HR. There's, um, there's, there's how you can integrate HR and tech, right? So I didn't particularly pack up tech and say, I'm not doing tech, I'm not doing IT, and I'm just doing strictly HR. No, I still have certificates. I have certifications and trainings in digital marketing, social media, in so many areas of tech. Right. So look at that, how you can syn synchronize both. So you're not just chucking one industry for the other, because you could get to the next 10 years and you need that particular experience. So imagine if I chucked tech years ago. Right. And I've left mm -hmm. everything tech and I just moved into HR. I'll be struggling now. OK. The mm -hmm. next thing you also yeah. need to know is that you need to know what it's going to take from you, because um, mm -hmm. there's a level of commitment it will take. You need to be ready for that. The work you need to put in. You are switching industries. It's not, it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. Are you ready to put yourself through that? Right? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, are you ready to be committed, to burn in the long hours, to read, to study, to go for trainings, to read certifications? Then you get a mentor as well. I think that's the fastest way for you to do it. If you get someone that's already in HR or already in mm -hmm. tech or already in accounting that can put you through. The person doesn't need to have switched, but the person already knows. And the person can tell you the future to say, hey, these are the five top skills you need to learn for you to succeed in this industry. These are the kind of opportunities you should look out for. Join this group. Join this association. Come with me for this program. Run this kind of event. Right? And then you also yeah. need to get support system. Switching is very, is very easy slash difficult, depending on if you have a support system. People that would not be asking you jam questions such as, what are you doing? Are you sure this is the right step for you right now? <laughs> Don't make this mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be doubting you, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know what you want to do and it's your career eventually. So you need to get people that are supportive, that you mm -hmm. can sit down them, sit them down. If you need to do PowerPoint presentation for your parents, do it. You know, you need to show them the trajectory to say, um, mom, dad, uncle, whoever, this is where this future, the future of my career is going into. If I don't take this step now, this is what I'm going to. So that's why I'm switching from law to medicine. If you need to get to get their buying, if they need to fund your education, you need to go for a master. There are an online MBAs now and so many of them. So you can do that online. Get support system, your wife, your partner, your prayer partners, whoever you need to get, coaches, mentors. Make sure that you get them on board, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for me. So I'll just let you go now. We'll Thank you so much. so much of your time. Thank you Thank so you. much for Thank being you. Here. I'm glad. All right, then. Enjoy your day. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for attending this session, guys. I enjoyed myself. I'm speaking for myself. And I know I'm speaking for quite a number of other people that have been on this call since, since we started. For me, has really opened our eyes to a lot of things. So let's just go back. Let's just go through our announcements. So um, you can sign up on Jobberman as a job seeker or as an employer, depending on where you fall in. So if you're looking for jobs, then you need to sign up on Jobberman. Go to www.jobberman.com forward slash customer forward slash sign up and sign up as a job seeker. Then if you want to sign up as an employer, you sign up, you can also sign up as an employer, put up your job listings and we'll get you the right talent. We also have job opportunities on the website now. We have, um, we have jobs from Student Hub. We have mobile field agent jobs nationwide. You can, um, you can apply for the jobs via the link on your screen right now. We have Novesha Translators Limited looking to hire 550 people for remote work vacancies as language translators all over Nigeria. We have job from Verify Me. Verify Me has been hiring lots and lots of people since May this year as verification agents. You can look up that link on the Jobberman website. You know, you can also become a virtual agent for Cornerstone Insurance. We have 
loads and loads of jobs. We also have the, virtual, the largest virtual career fair in Nigeria coming up. Trust me, guys, you don't want to miss this. I said earlier in the beginning of this session that we are trying to place 3 million people in jobs. So if you're looking for a job, you need to register for the virtual career fair. So you go to www.jobberman.com forward slash career fair. I'm just going to say that again, www.jobberman.com forward slash career fair. And it's taking place on the 30th of September, 2020. So you need to register now. So um another thing i would like to talk to you about is the fact that we have um if you're an employer you can put up your listings for free on the jobberman website right now so just put up your job you know create an account post a free job and your job will go live um so to speak to us if you want to reach out to youth jobberman youth engagement you go to www.jobberman.com forward slash youth engagement we have all our contact details on your screen so to speak to us via email you send an email to connect at jobberman.com to speak to us on linkedin we also have a page there you can speak to us on twitter at jobberman.com instagram at jobberman nigeria facebook at Jabberman Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining this session. We're really glad to have you here. So until next time, my name is Fred Juro. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.